Hi all you beautiful rebels. It is the fourth day of Halloween. Still plenty of time to be using your theme decks for the season. So I thought today would be a good day to come to you with a review of one of my favorite theme decks for the season, the Halloween Tarot by Kipling West, published by US Games. It's a Rider Waite Smith based deck that is so charming. It's an absolute must have for the season, I think. I really just break it out once a year. It's not something I use year round, but it's certainly something that you could use year round if you wanted to. Let's talk about some of the basics about the deck. First of all, we have the card stock. Hmm, that's all right. I guess it's typical US games, although this one to me feels a little bit more rigid than some of the other US games decks. Um, so it's a little bit harder to riffle shuffle. When you do the bridge, they're really more stiff, okay? Here's the backs, reversible, which I think is really nice. It's got a little, ooh, just a barely a gloss to it, but these are not glossy, thank goodness. They're more of a matte finish, really. So they're really good for taking pictures with, and um, um, it, surprisingly, I, your fingerprints don't show up on the front, which is something I always worry about when you have a lot of black on your decks. I do kind of wish it didn't have the white borders. See that on the front and the back? Um, so I might trim these down one day, but I'll probably buy a backup deck before I do that, just in case. Okay, so you have four suits that are slightly different than what we're going to find in the Rider Way. This is the two of ghosts. So ghosts are going to be your cups. You've got imps that are going to be your wands. You've got bats. That's going to be your suit of swords. And finally, pumpkins the suit of pentacles. And you can already see the Rider Waite Smith inspired images, right? So this would be the eight of pentacles. You can see the um, apprentice working on his pumpkins, carving pumpkin after pumpkin after pumpkin. So it's very, very similar. One of the things I love about this deck that you don't find in other decks is this little character. The little black cat follows you throughout the deck. So if you're an intuitive reader, he can add an entire new layer of interpretation for you. I'm going to show you. There he is down here. Here he is back here. This one, he's actually flying above them. Okay, so the cool thing about that is, is you can, everything here, they have lots of great expression that you can read from. So in addition to the scenes in the pips, you've got a lot of expression going on. There's happy smiling ghosts. There's some that are just kind of looking, you know, like they're not as happy. So you have a lot to draw upon, even though it's not necessarily a Rider Waite Smith clone. So let me show you a couple of them that I love. They're so different that are really good and a great example of an intuitive message that you might receive. Are you able to see that? Okay, this is the Wheel of Fortune card. And you can see here, I love this image. Different than the Rider weight, yet you still have the wheel that goes around. But can you see the background here? I know it's a little difficult with this lighting. Do you see the elephant? And then the little mouse right down here. I'll show you right up close. There's the little mouse. Of course, we have the cat character as well. But I love that this image can give you so much. And the Wheel of Fortune, I mean, what does an elephant mean to you? And having the mouse and that big animal being scared of this little animal, scared of its own fate. And then you've got this gentleman on the wheel, that like knife throwing wheel, right? Where you don't, it's out of your control, whether or not those knives hit you. And the same is true of the Wheel of Fortune sometimes. So I love the way that this is interpreted. So it's going to give you some additional pieces to look at when you are weaving your story. Here's another one that differs from the Rider Waite significantly, the star. Um, you know, it really doesn't look like at all like the star from the Rider Waite Smith, but it is obvious that it is the star. All of the names are listed at the bottom as well, so it's easy to see. Again, we see the black cat on the roof, and we have what's going on here. I do kind of like that you have this guardian overseeing the rest of the city, and the city seems to be, I don't know if the city is burning or if the city has... Um, um, is have a lot of warmth that's growing up there. So that looks like warmth and cool. So we do have some um, dual nature in the star, but it's not necessarily the same message as you'd find in the Rider Waite, but if you wanted to apply that, I think you certainly could. Another of my favorites, the chariot. Again, different from Rider Waite, not a clone. Look at that pumpkin smile. It's hilarious. I absolutely love that. And then here's another nod to the Rider Waite. You've got the little sphinx sitting right on the front of the car. So again, I think you're going to be able to read your Rider Waite Smith meanings with this deck. I don't think it's going to take a whole lot of study for you, but at the same time, if you are an intuitive storytelling type reader, you're going to love all the charming little details that you find in this deck for sure. 
let me show you the card that I saw first and I had to have the deck. I'm like, I have to have the deck, that's the card for me. The Ace of Pentacles. Look at the hand with the beautiful pumpkin full of all of the potential goodies that you have to share. You really do wanna reach out and grab that. It's like the ultimate treat. I just love it, I think it's so darling. Um, it's just an overall a darling deck. So what I'd like to do next is show you a reading that I do with the deck so you can kind of see how that little black cat shows up throughout and how the images work well together and what I think about this is what can be difficult to me this is what can be difficult about a deck like this all of the characters it's not necessarily um, really clear at first glance what's going on they're busy there's a lot going on in each one of the images okay so when you put them all together it's not as simplistic as the Rider Waite. You know, when you have the Rider Waite, you have symbolism that just jumps out at you. You can tell if you've got a predominance of wands, you've got a predominance of majors, swords, whatever it is. Even the numbers will jump out to you. In a deck like this where you have lots of busy, busy images, I don't think it's as clear right off the bat, especially if we're talking about changing out the suits, you know, the imps, the pumpkins, and the bats. It does take a moment where you have to take a step back and say, what does that stand for, right? And if you're not real familiar with the Rider Waite, then you have to give yourself a moment and then say, oh, this is the Four of Wands. It does have the nod. It does have the little awning right up here and these appear to be celebrating. But it's not immediately obvious. Like, look at the Five of Swords. You kind of get it. He's taking their candy away from them. It's a really clever interpretation. But when you put down a bunch of spreads, and I know the first time I go to read something, when I put down new cards and you have, let's say, a Celtic Cross or a big spread, um, instantly it just takes a little bit longer to draw in the message. Does that make sense? Um, I hope so. So I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to do a reading with it and hopefully you'll see. Regardless, it's a charming, charming, charming deck. Okay, I will see you in just a moment. Okay, let me start by showing you what I mean about the, the cardstock being a little bit more rigid than some of the other U.S. games. I'm going to go ahead and do my riffle shuffle here for you. It really takes a lot of force to do that. And, but you can see, look, there's no bend in the cards either. I think they can handle a lot of shuffling. They're still really smooth, very easy to shuffle, which is always very nice. But it's not, they don't, um, they don't bend as easily as some of the other U.S. games decks do. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure I show that to you. And then we're going to go ahead and do a reading with the Halloween Tarot. Give me just a minute as I shuffle and concentrate. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I just wanted to know what our current costume is that we're wearing for the season. What treats will we find up ahead? And what tricks are going to be in our near future? So, okay, instantly you can see, first of all, we got three reversed cards. Oh, bummer. But that means like things are feeling a little bit upside down right now. I don't think that's surprising to any of us. Instantly, look what I got here on the bottom of the deck. I rarely read in order, by the way, guys. So I got the death card, which I absolutely love in this deck, but it does confirm exactly what I'm feeling instantly here just with the upside down card. So it is easy to recognize when the cards are reversed because of the orange titles you see at the top. That part is really easy, but at quick glance, even in this spread, you can see how it's difficult to know what your cards are at first glance. So it's going to take you just a moment to consider them, unless you're super familiar with the deck. So this is the um, root card. For me, this always represents the current of the river. This is the energy that's flowing underneath the reading. Do whatever you want with it. It's going to be there. We can fight the current or we can flow with it. The fact of the matter is that right now and during this month and this period of time, we are experiencing a lot of endings and transformations. You can see the death moth down here. That's kind of a new element in the death card, which I absolutely love. And you can see the kitty cat here has wrapped his tail around the skeleton. So it's almost as if the character, if we're the kitty cat, is really embracing death. Everybody here is smiling and happy. So this indicates a really joyful transformation, even though the vulture is like hanging out for his meal. Okay, so we're in a period of joyful 
joyful transition. And again, if you're into symbology, um, symbolism, however we want to call it, there's a lot for you to draw on here. We've got a mouse, we've got the Ankh, you've got the, is the Saturn, we've got the moon, castle in the background. Um, any one of these can draw your attention. I love that death is actually watering the pumpkin. So it's already a message of growth and transformation, unlike what we may have encountered with the death card in the Rider Waite Smith. So the current energy, our current costume here is the Ten of Imps, which would be the Ten of Wands. And that's, you know, the card of being burdened and letting things drop, taking on too much all at once, all for yourself. This is a month of release. This is a month of letting it go. Letting it go so that you can find one thing by which you really stand by and feel really good about. So do you see how the kitty cat here has kind of gone off into the corner, eyeballing this little wand that has fallen and says, ooh, that's the one that I'm going to pick up. Okay, so don't resist knowing what that thing is that you stand by that you feel so passionately about that you're actually going to take action on it because everything else that's been burdening you is being released right now. What are the treats we have up ahead? Okay, well, it's the sun. It's reversed. Just, just know it's just a little bit delayed, okay? But you are looking at a very successful, very happy period of time coming up. It might take a little bit longer than you thought. Fair enough. We're only on the 4th of October. The actual end of Halloween, um, the actual Halloween when we get our tricks and treats is not until the 31st. So, yeah, I guess I'm pushing it a little bit saying that the 4th is Halloween, but... This is what we have. You have the treat of all the beautiful sun. It's like, look at all of the celebration of all these people around you. It's almost as if there's good rest, relaxation, lots of celebration. Um, these look like pinatas to me. So there's going to be lots of abundance all around you in this month. Okay. Just going to take a little bit longer than you thought it was going to. And what are the tricks? Okay. So we have the king of imps. Whoops. There we go. The king of imps reversed. Well, I don't know about you, but when I see the King of Imps, also known as the King of Wands, I always call him the CEO of the X Games, right? He is totally ready to do anything, to take on any risk. But when he's reversed, he feels a little judgy. So there might be yet some judgment out there for you um, that make, might make you feel uncomfortable. Now, this could be coming directly from you. Are you judging yourself too harshly right now? Because you want the success. You want to drop all the burdens that you've had. You want to stand by that which you feel really passionate about. But are you being critical about yourself? Are you rushing things and thinking, oh my gosh, I want my success right now. And then are you carrying too much and letting things drop? Or, woo, sorry about that. Are you releasing everything so that you can find that which is really important to you that you stand by. Just know that you might be judging yourself a little bit too harshly right now. Let's take a look at those little black cats going through our three card reading. A little, look at him, tentative. How does the lizard see me? And then here, picking up on the wand that has dropped behind, saying this is what I'm truly, truly passionate about. And then here, looking on to this crowd head on, saying, you know what? I know what it is I stand by now. It's right here. And I can join you head on and participate in this success. So it's almost like facing the crowd head on to be successful. And again, we already saw in the death card how the kitty has wrapped his tail around the skeleton as if to welcome this transformation and this end. So that is my reading for you with the Halloween tarot. Actually, like any tarot, I think it can be far more profound just because it's a theme deck doesn't mean it doesn't have profound messaging. Certainly this could be made to be very, very fun if we were doing this for a party. Generally speaking, my readings aren't um, lighthearted and as entertaining. Um, they are much more soul searching and purposeful. So even with a theme deck, I just want to show you how purposeful this can be. All right. So I'm going to turn these right side up. Let's see. We want success to come a little bit more quickly. Actually, let's keep this one this way. Let's release what's not serving us. Pick up the one thing, the one passion and desire that you really have and go forward with it. 
And I'm going to turn this one up, uh, right side up. Stop judging yourself. Start taking phenomenal risks. Okay, the fact of the matter is the risks are going to pay off for you. Do you see how the king now is staring at death? Go on into it. It's almost like you're the caterpillar going into the chrysalis. You're going to come out the butterfly. The butterfly's already here. So go for it. Break free of your chrysalis. Take that risk and do it because the fact of the matter is that you're going to be very successful. You are finally going to feel like the burden is being released from you this month. Okay? Again, you can see the one other thing I was talking about. It's a little difficult to see at first glance what the predominance is here. But now we can see. Let me pick them up for you again. Now we can see out of three cards, you've got two wands, actually four cards, two wands, two majors, big, big deal, big spiritual message coming from the Halloween tarot, all about your values, your passion, what you believe in, what you stand by in life and what you are willing to take action on right now in the world, whatever it is, know that you are going to be successful, even if it feels somewhat delayed to you at this time. All right, I hope that you guys will rush out and get the Halloween tarot if you don't already have it. I'm already thinking about getting it in the tin as well so I can carry it with me for the season, but isn't it adorable? I just love it. All right, guys, thank you again for joining me for the review. If you like it, please leave a like, and if you'd like to hear more from me, I would love if you would subscribe to my channel. All right, talk to you soon.